Hi booktube! So I'm here to talk about all the books I've recently purchased and basically do a March book haul because even though it's not the end of the month, we still have a week to go, I don't have any plans to purchase any more books um, because we went through like five or six days of straight sunny weather which was very nice because it's been so rainy and dark and gloomy outside. Um, it was a nice reprieve and so I went out and enjoyed it every single day. I took time off work to go out and drive around and you know see the scenery and um, it, was, it was very nice and so along with that I went to several bookstores and um, I should have counted how many books I purchased because I, I, there's too many for me to even hold them up but I um, spent $50 and I got a variety of books and so I've um, categorized it by nonfiction and fiction for the, for the most part. So I will start with the nonfiction because that's one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, bear with me if you, if you like the fiction. I'll, I'll get to that as well. Um, so the first one is by Linda Hasselstrom. This is an author I read this past week, actually. But this was, I think, the very first book that she wrote, A Windbreak, A Woman Rancher on the Northern Plains. And she has written many books all about her time, um, like, like her like, generational family ranch that is set, um, in South Dakota near um, Rapid City and so I, I know that area pretty well and so I was happy to find this first book. I'm happy to grab the book I recently read. Do I have it here? Um, yeah there it is. <laughs> so I'm looking for it. Yes yeah, so I recently read Feels Like Far. A Rancher's Life on the Great Plains. You know so it seems like a tagline that she seems to have um, for a lot of her books. Gilson says the same thing but um, yeah. So I'm, I'm curious to see how, how her writing has changed. This one's I'm flipping through it seems to go like through the year because it's like um, broken down by dates like May 9th, May 11th and so on. So like you know I love these kind of books like the you know through the year, slice of life, memoir, diary, whatever you want to call these. I love them. Uh, this next one is by Edward O. Wilson and another author that I am familiar with. This is In Search of Nature and I have a Library of America bind up of three of his works and I'm pretty sure this one isn't in there. I don't, I don't think it is so happy to uh, get this one and he writes all about he, he seems to focus on ants and bugs um actually have, let me see if I can grab it real quick because I have another book because I just organized my shelves um alphabetically earlier here it is um so I can actually <laughs> know where things are so yeah this is another book I read from him Tales from the Ant World um so yeah there is that one and so yeah happy to have another book so I think this is gonna be my fifth book by him so I need to get on reading more of his work because I've only read two of his books <laughs> but I own five so I don't know what the logic of that is but yeah there you go um this next one is Memories of a Big Sky British War Bride by Irene Hope Hedrick the title is what drew me in um again like memoirs historical you know tales of you know people moving out in the middle of nowhere that kind of thing I just I just love that so this is um Caught up in the trauma of World War II, um, Irene is welcomed by the U.S. troops um, with open arms. And so, let's see, where does she, she ends up in Polson, Montana, one of the many British war brides bound for America. And she is, um, she lives in her new home as a one-room, unpainted shanty on the border of the Salash Kootenai um, Indian Reservation. So yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll see what, how, how her, how her story is told. I have a feeling it's it's not um, like her life in Europe. Um, this next one is when Mon when Montana and I were young, a frontier childhood by Margaret Bell. You can see a theme here <laughs> with these books. I don't think I do. Yeah, it says a tough, um, rough. Oh, sorry, a rough, gritty, and blue of the Montana frontier in the 1890s. Um, so that one um, of men and mountains by William O. Douglas. And uh, yeah, I was interested like to see that because um, I because I've heard of William O. Douglas, but um, I didn't fully know that he wrote nature books. But he he has a two volume uh, autobiography, as well as these um, these nature books. And he says you know he was named by President Franklin D. Roosevelt as chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, he was appointed in 1939 to the Supreme Court and was served as a justice for um, 36 years. And that's what I'm familiar. Um, with him but I didn't really know he was an author and so I was happy to discover this one it has like French flaps and the deco edges and all of that um this is his tribute to the great outdoors of um yeah great outdoors of the United States so and he talks about his childhood and going through 
I guess, Time with Horses and Early Adventures. And he's written several books, so I'll have to see if I can get my hands on any others. The Days of My Years by Earl R. Smith. Um, there's, no, there's nothing on the back to describe what it is, but um, I was flipping through it. So the autobiography of an average American, and here they are again on their farm in uh, Pine Ridge in 1925. So you know, I don't, even, I don't really need to like go in depth on what it was about. Obviously, I, I purchased it. Um, just going off of the theme of all, all these other books I purchased on like, okay, the same shelf kind of thing, kind of deal. This next one is The Best of Still Meadow, A Treasury of Country Living by Gladys Tabor. I was Oh, I'm always delighted when I find some of her books because they're out of print and they're hard to find. This one was shelved in the wrong section. I think someone thought that Gladys was like a last name because it was shelved right beside the H's. Uh, and it wasn't it wasn't even in the nature section or anything. So I was I was like, oh my goodness, I found one. And I even asked at the counter if they had any other books by her. Like maybe they're shelved in random places that I'm not aware of. But no, this is the only book they had. But this is, because um, she's written many she wrote many books with Still Meadow in the title, or you know, or about Still Meadow, which is her 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 property, her like country property. But this one is a um like pulling out uh, a just a collection of some of her books. So it's like anthologized um, Harvest at Still Meadow, The Book of Still Meadow, Still Meadow Seasons, Still Meadow Day Book, Still Meadow Sampler, Still Meadow Road, and Still Meadow Calendar. Um, there's parts of each of those books in this, and I own several of those books, but I don't mind. Let's see if I can. Uh, where are they at? They're even on camera. Uh, do, do. <laughs> okay, there. <you> are. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like there, like, because I have it um, alphabetized like A through Z, but I have the nature and like the history. It's all it's all broken down. So I was trying to find where the T's were for where the nature section. So I have all of these books by here. So I have Country Chronicle all the way through the calendar. But so there's a couple in here that I haven't read, but yeah, I'll happy, happily reread some of her work. Not gonna complain about that. Um, Maine Magic by Bill Cogwell. This is another author that I am familiar with. I read one of his previous books last year. Um, let me see, Enjoying Maine, that was the other book I read. So this is a sequel. And so he writes about small town Maine on the coast and you can tell it was like, you know, about fishing and, uh, cause he, he lives right on this like peninsula, like like in this like waterway area and then there's so many like little like areas all over i mean I, I i know nothing about but it just sounds so fun so like i can i can dream about being in maine as i'm reading you know a story like this uh noel perrin second person rule um by a sometime farmer and i've read the first 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 person rule and i read best person rule which was like a collection of his work but so this one's like continuing on for the first one and i'll grab that one for you too uh, so I read this one, and so now I have a book too, and here's the author. And this is all about small town Vermont, this is the back of, back of that one. Okay, so A Year in Province by Peter Mayle. This is a book about France, I believe. So I saw this book, and I have borrowed this book many times from my library. Never read it, <laughs> never got to it. So like, it'd be nice to have like a physical copy just to like, Give me that nudge, that push to actually read it. Um, and I think it's just, this, you know, like a tr yeah, tourist. Um, they had been there often as tourists. Um, they cherished the, cherished the dream of someday living there year round. And um, okay, so it's a month by month account of um, his the charms and frustrations that him and his wife experienced in the remote country of the Luberin, um, restoring a two century old farmhouse that they bought on site. So that sounds very interesting. Uh, Growing Up with the Country, Childhood on the Far Western Frontier by Elliot West. And I, was, I got this, um, and it's like, has a little tear on it, which I, I can like, I'm hoping just like tape the back of it, and that'll keep it down, because um, I don't want to like slide it in and out of um, bookcases and then it get ruined anymore. But it was in good enough condition uh, to pick it up, despite that, because there's no highlighting, and the book looks like it was like never read. <laughs> um... But yeah, Child on the Far Western Frontier. So yeah, so this is like, in, instead of Vic being a, like a war bride or like a family going out or, or single, or, you know, whatever, this is like a childhood's perspective, which is, again, interesting. Um, and this last one for this theme here is Miss Aunt Nellie, the autobiography of Nellie C. Cornish. 
and here she is on the back. Um, and this one's like really rough. I don't know what I'm going to do <laughs> with, with this cover here. It's like falling apart. Um, but this says, let me see here. Um, Nellie was the wittiest and untidiest woman in North America. She had the soul of a master pianist, hands unable to do her bidding on the keyboard, and hands unable to do her bidding on the keyboard. So she had gathered around her the best musical teachers whom she could find and opened a musical school in Seattle. Um, it tells her story of her life in the arts. So yeah, there's that one. And then, okay, now going to some fiction. And it's, so there's still some nonfiction sprinkled in here. But um, along with going to bookstores, I, of course, stopped at some little free library. So I found A Long Fatal Love Chase by Louisa May Alcott, an author I'm familiar with, but I've never read this book. I know no, I have no idea what this is about, but this is, um, this is The Passionate Cry from a Beautiful, Impetuous Young Woman marks the opening of an extraordinary novel. Um, yeah, so we'll see what I think about that. It seems to be like maybe like a, a romance of some sort with this rose here. Um, so the next two books were, um, thanks to Steve Donahue, he had mentioned um, these books in, a, in previous videos. And so they sounded really interesting to me. So I wanted to see if my local bookstore had them and they did. So I, I picked them up. This is The Friendly Jane Austen by Natalie Taylor. The cover I am not in love with at all. Like this like funny, weird pencil illustration. It's, I don't know, something about it. <laughs> Maybe the nose. I don't know, something about the space. It, it's bothering me. I'm going to ignore that. Um, and still read the book but it's really interesting because there's all sorts of things in here it's not a straight through narrative um history or, or anything like that um but i'm sorry once again my phone popped up with a message but this is every generation rediscovers jane austen with a renewed enthusiasm um so let me see what does this include is it highlights of jane's juvenilia um learn about so it's, it seems to be like clips of snippets of her work and um biography and like i don't know <laughs> random things are in here so yeah i have no i have no idea <laughs> what this is about exactly because on the back there's a bunch of questions that you'll find you'll get your answers um throughout this book um what are jane austen's 10 surefire ways to be vulgar okay how do you tell a rake from a rattle why did virginia wolf compare jane austen to william shakespeare um how much money did Jane Austen earn from her books, like, <laughs> during her lifetime? So there's all sorts of things in here. Random, like, I don't know, like, quippy, funny things, I guess, that, that I'm going to learn about. And this other one that, um, see, down here I had mentioned in a, in a video was Home Comforts, The Art and Science of Keeping House by Cheryl Mendelson. And I have never heard this book, about this book at all. But when I looked it up, like, so many people had, rec uh, had, had rec rave reviews and so many people were recommending it as, like, the, like, the go-to Bible for you know, keeping housing and, and things like that. And like, how do you remove different stains and things? And so it's, it's massive. Um, but it seems to be like every single thing under the sun. And so I, I'm just gonna have fun, like flipping through this and seeing what all is in there. And it's probably going to be my go-to guide. <laughs> Anytime some random thing happens around the house that I need to fix. Um, okay. So let me see here. This next one is, um, a sci-fi book, Pilgrim, a book of the people by Zena Henderson. And this cover is what drew me in. It's, looks bizarre um but it says that, but then the back sounded interesting they looked human they were the people <laughs> I'm like what i don't know it says feared as witches they possessed superhuman powers they could read minds free objects from gravity and fly through space they lived alone and out and and outcast in cougar canyon so it's like somehow they like end up in like the southwest of america or something i don't know we'll see uh, Once Upon a Puppy by Lizzie Shane. I had read the first book by this author um, years ago, The, the Twelve Dogs at, of Christmas, um, that I really liked. And so um, I wanted to get this one. Um, it says, can one rambunctious dog bring two people, two complete opposites together? You know, so like, you know, dogs and like romance and yeah, it, it just sounded cute. Uh, Swag by Elmore Leonard, another author that I've read several books by I recently read his western collection for June on the range but he also has written you know other like more gritty in the city books and so this was one of those uh the fire and the ore by Olivia Hawker this is a historical fiction about it's in 1857 and three women's once strangers are, are pulled together as their 
going through the Utah Territory. And I believe they're walking. I might be wrong. I was like reading this before, but they get pulled together through tragedy and have to, you know, find a way outside, out, out, you know, to get to get wherever they're going in the Utah Territory. And then I have a couple of children's books: uh, Loris Lowry, Us, and Uncle uh, Fraud. Uncle Fraud. Okay. <laughs> and Loris Lowry, I, you know, I recognize the name. I think all of us do who, who, you know, read him as a kid. Um, but I never heard of this book and this is about an uncle who unexpectedly stops by um, the family home and leaves a box hidden somewhere with a mystery map and so I was like yeah this, this sounds something light and cute and quick to read um, and then Fair Weather by Richard Peck this is an author I really like I recently read one of his books do I have it over here um, I recently read a book of his um, last week and uh, the Tales Down Under something like that down yonder <laughs> and that was like set in Chicago and this one is set in Chicago as well yeah it is 1893 Chicago um, like the World's Fair so that's like fun and then this last one is a Newbery Honor book which I'm trying to collect and read through all of those and this is Dragon Wings by Lawrence yeah this is their dream was to fly so will will win will wind rider take to the skies so yeah those are all the books that I have picked up. Um, as you can tell, I have I have so many. Like, thank goodness I organized my shelves before I'm going to put them away because I, I needed space because I knew what I was going to get into. I had no room um, if, if I didn't. So, yeah, I have a little wiggle room here. And I have, uh, I'm rearranging these shelves to, to get more room because my nonfiction books are, like, overflowing. And so I need to, like, you know, shuffle some of the fiction books over to make room for those. But anyway, <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, BookTube.